Hey everybody, RPG Guy here, and it's, it's been a while since I've done an RPG Guy Talks, and I, again, I usually, if they don't have to do with RPG games or board games, and they have to do about the entertainment field, you guys know you're, you're in for a doozy. And if you read the freaking title of this video, uh, yeah, you're in for a doozy, because I'm going to talk about two things. Uh, depending on how long this video goes, I'll either get to, I might separate them, but um, it really needs to be said. So, but we're going to start with the easily the most trollable thing we can we can talk about, which is Cowboy Bebop, the live action series. Um, I normally don't get into too much discussion. I backed, I, you know, I, I made a video defending James Rolfe. I felt we needed that needed to be done uh, when people were attacking him for not seeing the Ghostbusters 2016 film, and him stating that because a lot of people were asking if he was going to see it. Um, uh, and in, in the in the case of Cowboy Bebop uh, live action, uh, I have opinions, and my love for the anime is deep. It is actually be, be besides Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z, Voltron, Ultron, and a few of the '80s animes animes that was out at the time. I had not really gotten into anime that much beyond those shows, and then I saw Cowboy Bebop on Toonami back in 98, 99, somewhere in that, that area. I was, I'm going to say I was still in middle school or high school when it came out. And it, it was an anime that changed my life. Um, that anime, and, and, and I know that sounds weird for somebody to say that, but let me explain why. Number one, the music was iconic. I became a music major. I am a jazz sax guy. Yoko Kano's music, uh, was tugging tugged on my heartstrings in such a way that it, it shaped the way I viewed jazz. It shaped the way I viewed writing music because I was interested in composing at the time. And to me, to hear that kind of music was iconic to everything that I hold dear with the jazz community. I own the Cowboy Bebop uh, CD box set for the music. It's like four discs of just straight up music from the show and different vari variations that didn't even get aired. You know, all kinds of cool stuff. I have the Cowboy Bebop band score. You know, I got a lot of stuff with regards to the music. Um, and I got that signed by Yoko Kano um, when I bumped into her at a uh, at a jazz convention um, and a composer's convention, too, later down the road um, for film. Anyway, getting moving forward here. So and then that's just the music. The show itself to me, was one of the most unique shows, even for its time, because a lot of people tried to copy it, but it it was a show that didn't talk down to you, had well-written characters, had interesting scenarioistic stories, because though the show is semi-canon, mostly canon, some episodes could be watched out of order, and you would never know that they were watched out of order, right? But it is somewhat episodic, with a mild canon that's in there, um, and every character is treated with a lot of respect. Their backstory is treated with a lot of respect. Um, they're, they're complex characters, well-written characters, well-acted characters, whether you listen to the uh, Japanese dub or I recommend the English dub, especially if you're not into anime that much. But a lot of the improv English lines, especially with Jet Black when he talks about you know certain types of jazz, um, and same with, you know, when they, when him and Spike talk about Charlie Parker, it's much better in the English version than it is the Japanese, uh, language. And that's coming from a musician, but getting back into it, some of that banter back and forth about certain pop culture references that they talk about makes more, uh, makes more sense in certain contexts. And, uh, it is one of those that if you've only watched it in the Japanese du uh, dub, Try watching it in the English dub and get past the first episode, because sometimes it can be a little daunting uh, of a task. But back on point, it was a it, it introduced so many ideas. It was dare I say it was already progressive. It was progressive for its time, and, and it's still far more progressive than the new Cowboy Bebop, the live action. Which you know I'm not big on the whole progressive movement thing. I have issues with it. Most of it is because it's condescending. It talks down to the audience. And treats the audience as if they're idiots. And in the attempt to be progressive, they dumb down characters, they dumb down storylines. 
they hit you over the head with whatever their agenda is, and they actually ruin the story that they're trying to tell because they 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 just they just fuck it up. They fuck it up beyond repair because they're so f- focused on a message that isn't pertinent to the story that they're trying to tell that we lose focus on that. And that's a reoccurring problem with Cowboy Bebop, the live action version, on top of something that they were trying to do. And I, I'm hopefully in this, let's talk, because I'm going to do Ghostbusters Afterlife either after this or I'm going to do it in a separate video. Um, one of the things to say about what they did was it was it was lazily thrown together. Um, the, there were elements that I that are opinionated as far as performances go, um, but the overall story was was is just garbage. They destroyed a lot of the continuity of the original show in order to adjust things so that they would be easier for them. Now I I don't know any of the production details. It was because of the coof was it because of other elements and to be fair it really doesn't matter if you can't create the show that you're supposed to be creating then you shouldn't create the show okay you should put a, a little pause on that and say hey we need to hold off on finishing this because uh this scenario is is not working out so obviously there's lots of problems i will talk about the good things first because that's not going to take me very long um, and th- those good things are there are a few actors that you really feel like are trying. And I am going to talk about maybe one or two episodes that are not major giveaway episodes. Um, that I say you could watch that episode and watch the original version of that episode. And really, you can really see structurally and tone-wise how they fucked it up. How bad it actually is. Just from watching one or two episodes and comparing and contrasting. And remember this, too, that the live action show is 60 minutes and the original anime is 24 so you have more than twice the time to tell the story better and, and you, you, you fucked it up you fucked it up you scum you sons of bitches oh, you fucking all of you should die no i'm just kidding all right deep breath deep breath sorry okay I mean, literally, a, 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 a teenage child could have written a script better. And there are a few elements, like I said, that are good, and they're good with the loosest intention. So, like I said, there were actors who were trying to do a good job. And they were given garbage. They didn't do a lot of takes. It's very clear they didn't do a lot of takes, because you can see screw-ups in the backgrounds of a few scenes and things that just don't make a lot of sense. And uh, you can see, but like I said, you can see characters doing the best with what they've got. And I'm going to use the episode Pierre LeFou as a reference for you guys. Pierre LeFou is the, is the, is what the name of the episode is in the original series. And then in the re, in the live action, it's actually the third to last episode, I think. <coughs> I forget off the top of my head, but I think it's the third to last episode. Um, and... You know, the actor playing Pierre LeFou, he tries, you can tell he's trying, but at the end of the day, structurally, like, they didn't give him the setting and the setup that he needed to succeed, and they failed ultimately, and that's, that, that, that episode, I can, it breaks down literally what's wrong with the entire series, and we'll get to that. So there's that element, too. The third element that I think is a nice attempt, but it failed was to tell Vicious's what Vicious was doing in the overarching background. You can do that, okay? I, I think you can do that. I, I agree that that's a story that you could add, uh, but you have to create the original show properly first. And they didn't do that. They, they fucked it up pretty bad. And at the end of the day, that's really what they should have done. With 60 minutes, to be fair, they could have done two episodes at a time. Um, in that time frame, or you just stretch out every episode. And again, we'll talk about what, what I maybe would have done, but again, I like the idea of telling more about Vicious, but they, they dropped the ball on that so badly. From actor choice to the script itself to what they had to change in the original anime, from the original anime. I, and again, the manga is the manga I, you know, don't really care about the manga. I didn't read the manga, if you know. So just heads up, I didn't read it. 
Um, I never have. I didn't even know there was one. I think somebody pointed out to me there was. And I'm like, yeah, I haven't, I haven't read it. So I'm, you know, I'm basing it off the show because the show does enough. And again, like I said earlier, there's progressive stuff in the original show. And there's stuff about Vicious's background in a few of those episodes. Um, and that was actually not explored. And it was just a big epic cavalcade of failure. Um, they gender swapped a lot of characters. They put characters in weird positions and things in the vicious storyline that didn't make sense to the original show. Um, and it failed. It, it, it was, a, like I said, a cavalcade of failure that didn't really make a lot of sense. Um, and uh, it was executed very poorly. Um, as far as the sets go um, and stuff like that, too, that wasn't actually that bad. The way the ships looked and stuff, again, wasn't that bad. I think that the sh Bebop could have been a little, you know, more narrow and tighter in certain areas of the ship. But in the same respect, it looked pretty good. Um, again, I'm not... You can have take a lot of liberty with the way the ships look and stuff like that, as long as they're mostly there. And I know some people had an issue with Faye not getting her official ship until near the end of the series, but I, I could let that slide. If there's a good storyline reason for it, there wasn't a good storyline reason for it. Um, and I might make a reference to some things from that episode where it was pointless to have that entire episode <laughs> was a shit show. Um, but yeah, there was a lot of gender swapping and weird things that didn't need to happen. And yeah, you could do so. And, and I'll talk about my personal preference to that. You can do those things with variously uh, irrelevant characters. Like Harrison from the the Ganymede Sea Rat uh, gang that was going to try to turn original anime. They turn everyone into monkeys using the rockets filled with a, uh, the chemical called Monkey Time. And it turns human beings into monkeys. Well, in, in the remake, they turn them into trees. And they show pretty graphic deaths of that. Which, okay, that works. That could be more intimidating to be than being turned into a primate. Um, they, they, they gender swapped Harrison and then they didn't even follow through with what made the mom, mother intimidating to begin with. So the mother is the kind of the terrorist leader group in that story. And her, th you know, she had what, three sons, I believe in it. And Harrison screws up <clears throat> and mom turns her, him into a monkey. Okay. Uses monkey time to punish him. And so you find out mom's a ruthless villain. Um, in the remake, they they never did that. Um, I think one of them accidentally gets their hostage that they needed killed. Uh, and then there, that you never see that ruthlessness of the mother. And so that makes the mother less of a threat or a fear, really, other than what she planned on doing by shooting rockets at Ganymede, filled with the stuff that would turn everyone into trees. Um, which again is, is a weird notion, but okay. Um, but they made the, that character, a, a, a Harrison, a woman, and that's where you can get away with that. You could have done that. Okay. Because it's a really small role or in the original anime, it was a very small role. It, gender was not something that drove that story. So you can, you can do that with characters. Um, Harrison is an, is not an iconic character. And like I said, nobody would have noticed, but the way that they tell the story is they botch pretty much how it ends. And like I said, watch those two episodes with the Ganymede Sea Rat Gang and, um, <clears throat> which I forget what their official name was. And then you watch the, an you watch the anime episode and you, 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 you'll watch, there will be similarities in the arc or in the story rather, and how it kind of ends. Actually, how it ends is very different, but you'll see some similarities. But ultimately, it's awful. It, it's just the, the 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 live action version of it's not good. And they had sixty minutes to tell that story. The original anime did it in twenty four, told a coherent story. Could you expand on that story? You could expand on any of them. You could show the backgrounds. You can show the enemy sea rats being butchered and tortured. You can, and see what drives the group to do what they're doing. You can spend an extra ten minutes on that. Or five minutes on that. You can you can show the what the relationship between the mother and the children, you know, and show various you know the mom doing horrible things to some of the other 
children, just not the, the initial three. Maybe there were five kids in the beginning. There's there's things they could have done that would have expanded upon that story, fill in an extra 10, 15 minutes, make a 45-minute episode, and it would be coherent and have the things pretty much play out the same. But then people would say, why not just watch the anime? Well, again... You can get better acting, you can get better quality, and you can get better, more intimate communication and scenes, cinematography from that you would not be able to get from the anime. Um, the other elements that I would include in that, too, is you could expand all the action scenes more if you really wanted to. Um, but that, that cost a lot more money. You could expand a lot of the background... The hostage scene could take longer. You could stretch that out a bit more. There's there's a lot of things you can do. Um, <clears throat> again, the tree thing isn't really what bothers me. Because that isn't a legitimate threat, just as this, the monkey time was in the original. But the way the original ends, versus the way that the re, the l live action does. I'm, I re, I, I'm reluctant to call it a remake, because it really isn't. Um, it's a piss-poor remake, if you want to call it a remake. But it's, you know, even the live action... Regardless of how you break it down, it's just all around terrible. But we look at those the that episode just as a standalone. And, you know, how the mother gets pretty much her comeuppance is more from what the heroes do versus what happens in the remake where... Or in the remake, the live-action version where Harrison, uh, she turns on her mother and takes them, them both out. And... Okay, fine, you can do that. You can make the mother be that way. Um, I still think uh, that the mother would have earned it more if she had done something horrible to Harrison. And because we never see that scene, it, it doesn't make the mother seem as big of a, of a, of a hard-ass or as threatening as uh, the other one. Because when you think about it, you're willing to make your own child die or become a monkey, primate, because they fail to do something that's, you know, basic or simple or put the family at risk or something. They did something stupid. And you can you really feel that the mother values her cause more than she values the safety of her own family. And that makes her despicable. That makes her deplorable. Um, you, you know that there's no um, you know that her threat is is a big deal because she's willing to sacrifice her own flesh and blood f to ensure that the other's children do not fail her. And so we don't, and again, we don't get that feeling as much in, uh, in the, in the remake, in the live action. I might say remake on accident. Just bear with me. Um, and, and I think that that's really what we need to address. And that's going to be a common thing thing we see throughout uh, throughout the live action now there are people who say they like it but i guarantee you they have not watched the original anime okay and if they did they might have gone in with a bias because they really want this one to succeed because they think it's more progressive when it is in fact not and i will explain that because that's all going to be in the bad part so uh, the few good things that i said again are really that uh the the the, the visual effects are fine the costumes this are, are fine. I know a lot of people didn't like the way Faye looked. And to be fair, that was the least of the problems with the regards to the character of Faye Valentine. If that was her outfit and she was written and played properly, um, I'd be okay with that. I think most of us would. I, I can't envision too many fans of the original series being like such sticklers that every freaking costume has to be spot on. Every outfit has to be as risque or as ex 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 exotic or as um, ex exposing as the original show. Okay. I don't think that you need to necessarily do that. Okay. You can, and that would, yes, you would get kudos for authenticity, but you don't need to necessarily do that. Okay. Just, just, throwing that out there um so yeah so like i said i think that the the the, the costumes were pretty good um the, the uh overarching no no there was nothing in the story that was good um the 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 special effects were fine there are a handful of er characters that seemed like they were doing the best they could with what they had i think the actor that played jet black was doing his best 
You know, I felt he was giving it his A game. Um, whereas I, I felt the actor that played Spike and I, the actor that played Vicious for sure, and the actor actress that played Faye were showing up for a paycheck to a degree. Um, probably Spike being the least likely. Like he was trying as well, but realized that this is going to be a horrible show. So I'll just show up. You know, he did a few scenes pretty good, but a lot of it was very off the cuff to me um, and whatnot. And again, it could have been how he how he's, his character was written and how he was directed to act. That is one thing. Don't ever attack an actor or an actress outright without really analyzing. Do you think this is a problem of the writing? Do you think this is a problem of the directing? Do you think this is a problem of the acting? Or a mix of any amalgamation of those things. So... Let's get to what everybody wants to hear is why does the live action Cowboy Bebop, Bebop suck and everybody who was involved with it should be freaking fired from the industry for it. And literally they should. I, I am one of those people that is at this point I, I, that and that's not because I'm a diehard Cowboy Bebop fan, but that's because I can analytically go through what they created and dismember it to the point where the director probably didn't even watch the original show enough. Um, the writer, the script writer, the screenwriter did not watch the show enough. Um, and, uh, all the actors and actresses with the exception of a few did not watch the original show to have an understanding of the characters that they were playing. Um, and nobody apparently, I know somebody, you know, we all know somebody stepped in and said, you know, this isn't really how the original show was. And then everybody told that person to shut up or get fired that's probably something that happened because there's no way and I've been in studios I've been in you know recording gigs with people who would argue these things and no one would have let this run the way it did unless somebody in a high position said so and it usually comes down to directing writing and producing um and sometimes the actors themselves so let's let's break this down into into segments of unforgivableness. I guess we start with the most egregious thing, which is the writing. Um, the directing, um, the directing is second to the writing. Okay, by far it's second to the writing. Um, and the reason is is that when if you're writing Cowboy Bebop, how how do you do it? How do you adapt an anime that is story written wise considered? amazing because there's only maybe one or two episodes of the 23 24 episode anime that are mediocre but there to me in my my opinion there's no bad episode of cowboy bebop there's some that are just kind of mediocre but unless maybe that's because i didn't relate to them like other people might but openly every episode is really good okay with the exception of maybe one or two and that can vary from person to person um and how you fuck that up ultimately is beyond me. However, as a writer, you may be poised to by the producer to uh, we need something new. Well, what can we do that's new? Well, they added Vicious's behind the scenes gobbledygook, which is just nonsense. And as creative as you could be with that, you actually have to stick to the source material to make to have made it work. They did not do that. They changed around characters like Mao, Yenrai, um, Ten, Mao, Ten, Tenrai, Yenrai, whatever, however you say it. They added a villain who eats testicles. That is not a joke. They added a villain who owns a winery that eats testicles, known as the Eunuch. I am not kidding. That is actually in the in the live action show. That is and that character, to my knowledge, is not in the anime, as far as I can remember. Um, they created that. A character who has no personality, who has no redeeming qualities, who has no real arc that we follow to understand how he became what he is other than dialogue explaining it. And to be fair, there's a better character they could have used, which is, I believe the character's name is Gren, which they I think he is in the live action version and they screwed him up there too. But many of you who know the anime watch the Jupiter Jazz episodes one and uh, Jupiter Jazz one and two. And you know who I'm talking about. It's the sax player who actually is the most progressive character in that show uh, because of... And I'll explain that episode, and we'll talk about that when we get there, when we talk about vicious the the folly that is the vicious story arc. 
Um, and fearless. <laughs> when they said that, I almost pissed myself. <laughs> and I knew who they were talking about. And I'm like, no, no, you didn't just call Spike fearless. No. <laughs> oh, no. Did you not watch the anime where Vicious always calls him Spike? You know, it, it's like, mm -mm -mm. no, no. Um, but we'll get to that. But going back to this, the writing. Um, number one, those. An anime like Cowboy Bebop is well written. There is no reason whatsoever to change the stories that those sh that show tells. Okay, so like the first episode, it 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 oh kind of works. Okay, until Faye shows up because Faye doesn't actually show up in the show until the third episode, and they screwed that up. And then they added an element from a later show, I think called. Uh, where she's working at the at the casino, and she's trying to make the deal with um, the casino owner. They attached that, I think, to the female, the, the villain, the, the the love interest of the villain in that first episode, as uh, Asimov. Um, it's his girlfriend who's faking pregnancy because she's carrying a bunch of illegal drugs in her pregnant belly, in her fake pregnant belly, and. Um, yeah, so so the Asimov thing could have worked. It, it was it was a little I, I could get I could tolerate it. It wasn't great, but I could tolerate it. I felt that the um, female actress playing um, the girlfriend was doing the best she could. Asimov was a little off. Um, they wasted the freaking. Uh, I, I swear that was the dude from uh, the Lord of the Rings, the King of Rohan. Uh, Rohan, wait. Yeah, Rohan, before he died, uh, in the, in the third movie. Um, but that actor was in there, I swear he was. He was also the captain of the Titanic, from the movie Titanic. Um, but yeah, I just, I, I, I'm reluctant to say that that episode was good. It was flawed, it was very flawed. But the thing that ruined it was the the, the 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 them shoving Faye Valentine in an episode she was never actually in to begin with, and then immediately she kind of pretty much runs away by the end of that episode or something like that. No, she's not. She's still there in the next episode, being uh, not Faye Valentine, as far as I'm concerned. But ultimately, um, that Asimov storyline gets a little muddled. Um, some of the scene, scenes look good. They they forgot the old. The old men, I think, that were in the original. Um, I didn't see... I don't remember seeing them. I think they're in another episode, though. I could be wrong. But they... Um, you know, they they left out... Uh, what was this? Uh, Bull, who is the... Um, I think his name is Bull. Who is the Native American. Who is kind of a soothsayer-type uh, character... Who actually use you know Spike goes to do and he hears that the red eye coyote what is the line again I haven't watched the original anime in years in probably the better part of a decade the red eyed coyote will be on the northwestern zone of Norte or something and so we lose that mysticism and that mysticism is important because Spike actually believes in it and it's a part of Spike's characterization that's really good um, and it comes back later you know. When he talks to Bull, uh, I want to say the character's name is Bull, when he talks to that character again. And again, it's a representation of Native Americans. And I feel that as a person who knew a Native American, who know, who know, knew a Native American person, a woman, at one point in my life, it's like their representation in film is almost zero. If not zero, literally. And when you take them out of a show where they're actually, whether you think they're caricatures or not, it is an admirable portrayal. Of that of of a Native American in their Native American regalia, their outfit, um, and the fact that there is a mysticism to what they do um, within their culture, within you know, and their history, and so that to me is just seems like a silly thing to not have in your show, a, 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 a well, a decently respectable variant of that whether you think it's as respectable or not subjective but i do worry that native american culture is not being referenced enough in, in film and then more importantly it's being taken out of film where it previously was and that to me is not progressive that is hyper regressive 
when you remove characters who are of a certain ethnicity, whether they're white, black, Hispanic, or let's say brown, and based on whatever that culture is, when you remove it from a film, for whatever reason, you are doing a disrespect or a disservice, unless it is way over the top insulting and character, and done in such a cheap caricature that is an insult to that, that group. And even then, you have to make sure that there's a reason for that. Okay, if there's a reason for it to be over the top caricature, then you shouldn't take it out, even if it is insulting, because it has maybe has to do with the story. There's there's times and places to to make those decisions. The, the Cowboy Bebop live action remake was not one of that was not one of the places to do that. So already in the first episode, I'm nitpicking just little things, and they really gets on your nerves because it's so poorly handled and mismanaged that a story that was pretty open and shut that should have been really easy to just recreate because that's what they were doing was recreating episodes and then half the episode was the original show's episode intermixed with their own bullshit that they made up on the spot that is stupid and doesn't work and then they did the vicious storyline and that whole thing is going to be talked about in a moment but like i said they added Faye in there and and she was awful you know she's probably the worst character written in the entire show even over vicious um, and then even the acting as well, but we'll get into that too. So the first episode's a flop. And so the, and, and well, all the episodes are horrible. I've watched them all. They're all terrible. Not one of them is redeeming in any way, shape or form. And this has a lot to do with the writing and the producers are guilty of this too, because they weren't checking their writers. If you are a producer of a remake that is live action of an existing show, you need to somehow, somehow pay homage and respect to its original source material, which this produce, these producers did not do, which these actors, many of them did not do, and these writers did not do. So it was a universal failure in almost every respect. And it should be noted that these people should not be allowed to write screen, uh, play, should not be allowed to write screenplays, of pre-existing material because they clearly don't know how to. It is very apparent, it is very obvious that they don't know how to write screenplays for pre-existing material. And that is one of the big things that Hollywood has failed at time and time again. This is just on an epic, epic scale. Every single episode that references the original show, and every episode kind of does, except for kind of the last one. It's a hit and miss. Um... I mean, they do reference it, but it's it's so bad that you may as well just pretend like it doesn't. Um, but ultimately, it's just that horrible. Uh, every every single iteration, every episode from when they introduce uh, a Hakim, is it Hakim Hakim, who is the dog thief in the uh, second episode who really only steals one dog, but in the re in the live action, he steals a whole bunch with the intent to kill them. That has nothing to do with the original story. Um, you know, the, the lack of Ed, Ed, um, Edward and the way that they, ha I'm not going to go into Edward that much because I just won't. It's not a worth the effort. Because he's not, and she's not in most of it anyway. And I am going to say she, because that is the original character. And this is a, my beef with, with Holly Weird right now. And I call it Holly Weird because you, it's weird to take iconic characters that are a part of the main cast. Edward is part of the main cast, as is Faye Valentine, as is Spike, as is Vicious, as is Julia, as is, um, uh, did I say Spike? Jet as is Gren and some of the other ones that have very Yao tent Yao meant Yao is a bank is a major player in the, in the story. There are times when you can gender swap and do all these things. There are times when you don't. And that's when they are major characters that make the story turn and that there's a reverence that is paid to those characters. First and foremost, if you want to make Yao, Yao, Yao Tenrai a um, female, you can do that, but you have to prove in your first four episodes or however many episodes before you introduce this character, you have to prove that you can actually write the, sh the story properly. Because then when you introduce Yao, Yao as a female, okay, you've shown that you've coherently written the story correctly and that you've earned the right to alter certain characters. The problem was is that when we were introduced to Yao, it's several episodes in, 
and every episode is a fucking cavalcade of failure. And so you had you did not deserve to not just gender swap that character, but rewrite that character entirely. Same with Anna, right? You didn't earn that. You didn't earn the right to recreate that character in the way that they did. And it, and it sucked. It sucked. It was horrible. There was some promise. I was I was okay with it for about 30 seconds. And then instantly I, I hated it. The rewriting of Julia, awful. The rewriting of Vicious, horrific. The re- the addition of the eunuch, completely mis... Just... Re- I'm going to use the word retarded. And I'm using it appropriately. It is slowly thought. Meaning that the person who wrote it w- was not thinking about what they were doing. Because their thoughts could not keep up. Like, they weren't thinking fast enough to keep up with what they were writing. Because just because you can do something... Famous words from one artist to another. Okay? Just because you can do something doesn't freaking mean that you should. It just... It doesn't mean that you should. And when you fail at that level, every person involved, unfortunately, should feel ashamed of themselves. Even the people who tried their, their hardest, gave their best performances, did the best work that they could do within the confines of what they were given... But you still have to feel guilty because you could have sat there and said, this is wrong. This is wrong. We, You guys should really go back to the board. And I I think a few people might have done it and they were told to shut up or they got rid of them. And that that's a, a um, unforgivable when it's this egregious of, of an issue. And maybe Death Note was that, the live action Death Note was that bad, but I didn't really watch the anime. I haven't watched anime in years because I write music for pilots for a lot of them. And for commercials and stuff, and I don't want to watch them as much anymore because I see a lot of, you know, pre pre finished material. I gotta write music. I, I see it so much now, um, before it's you know during post production and stuff that I, I just don't want to look at it. Um, but get, getting back on point, um, yeah, it was a cavalcade of failure. Um, as far as the writing goes, and like I said, they rewrote key characters, which they could have improved upon. But they did the polar opposite because they didn't understand not just the function of that the original function of that character, but what the story meant to the main cast, okay, and how it needed to be expressed to them. They tried to make Julia this character that's bigger than what she was in the original, and it doesn't work. It doesn't. It could it work? Yes, it really could have. It really could have worked. You could have had this very very deep kind of complicated convoluted story where she falls in love with vicious and she wants she's worried about her life being taken out because of the way vicious is handling things with the syndicate you, there's a way you could tell that story it's a dumb story to try to tell because you'd have to write it quite you'd have to write it almost flawlessly to make it work and you shouldn't be doing that anyway and again it'll go to how I would have done it including the elements that they wanted to include but yeah, you number one, they they should not have written Yao and Anna the way they did, um, because those characters are completely wasted. They're completely pointless. They're not well written. They're not well acted too, which doesn't help. And I could be the directing too and the writing that made those characters not work as well. And the big beef at the end of all of that was that it open overtly amounts to nothing that wasn't already kind of done better in the original and again we don't really we meet Yao but we don't really know much about him other than that he was an important figure in the syndicate and he knew about Spike and then he gets axed off okay early on too I think it's the first time we actually see it's the first episode we actually see Vicious in a significant portion of it the confrontation between Spike and Vicious for the first major time um and then the scene with, with Anna, Anna comes way later in the story, and she is not running some underground bar where put where the ISSP, which is like the space FBI or the space police, are buddying up with the syndicate in this neutral bar zone. It's like no, no, no. Maybe that happened before Spike and this whole syndicate thing fell apart with Spike, but not while Spike was away from the syndicate yeah so uh oh yeah by the way spoilers for both the anime and the live action just throwing that out there but yeah no way 
No way am I buying that. The the story that's in the original with regards to the character Anna is significantly better. And it is, has nothing to do with any of that garbage at all. And there's no eunuch. There's no eunuch. There's no testicle eating eunuch. Okay, I'm not kidding. The, the dude opens like this freaking uh, cloche looking thing or like this like ha- semi cloche like like bowl and there's fucking testicles in it that he eats. It's disgusting. It was not in the original show. And I don't know who got off. Somebody was violently getting off on including that scene in there. And they should be ashamed of themselves because not because of the act itself, maybe in a different show, a ri- an original show per se, you could do something like that, but to to take an established story and introduce a character that has that does something that's not even relevant to the story, you know, just it tells you how bad of a writer you are. That you had to put in a character that made no sense. That could not could you add this character to the show? I'll actually explain how you can do that. But it would not be a character with regards to the syndicate. It would not be part of the vicious storyline. It would be something exclusive and on its own. And again, you can do these things, but you really need to carefully figure out how. And I'm sorry, that whole arc is bad. Let's talk about the writing of the vicious arc. It's just bad. Vicious's storyline is just handled poorly. And the thing is, is vicious is like Jaws. The less we see of him the more intimidating he is. I know that's a weird thing for people to understand, but we don't need to see Vicious that much. And what it is is that every time we see Vicious, he usually gets his way. He beats Spike in the church. He beats Spike, in a sense, kind of. Actually, it's more of a stalemate when Gren is involved um, in Jupiter in the Jupiter Jazz ones. But every time he shows up, we get some backstory to Spike and what his involvement was with the syndicate and Vicious's kind of like hardcore persona coming through. Vicious um, as a character, it's like, again, don't show, tell, don't tell, show, and you need to show only the things we need to see. We didn't need to see the whole behind the scenes operation. And the, the the vicious has way too many lines, as does Julia. They they shouldn't be talking almost that much, because it takes away from the mystique and the fear and the fear of the unknown, and all of the things that create vicious. And again, it's we're, the whole sh- series had a problem with tone. It was tone deaf. It didn't know if it wanted to be a comedy. It didn't know if it wanted to be sci-fi, th- you know, thriller. And every and, and again, that could vary from episode to episode, but it always got the tone wrong because of something that one of the characters did, or how certain characters behaved in that episode, how events unfolded. You know, when Faye Valentine shows up in that first episode, the entire tone of the show is just ruined. Any good f- notions of progress that that show had in the first episode is lost because of the dialogue and the ridiculousness of Faye Valentine showing up when she did in that scene. Okay. And her motivations, especially if you know the original show, the anime, it's completely ridiculous. It's stupid and it didn't need to be there. And I do, I guarantee you the people who wrote the script knew not to knew should have known better. Okay. Especially if they had watched the original show. Um, and, and we'll get to what you could have done. Again, we'll, I'll do a whole how you fix Cowboy Bebop live action. But they're not going to do it, so I, I, I can make it pretty easy there. But the vicious backstory is handled very poorly. Um, and dare I say, it's the actor overacts the part. And he's actually not a good casting option. Um, you need someone who is intimidating. That that man is not intimidating. He's He is almost a cartoon character trying to... He's like Judge Doom, but more goofy and trying to pop out like of his skin. It looks like he's going to jump out of his own skin and start running around doing Tasmanian devil shit. I mean, he's not, you know, maybe, maybe if Vicious is near the end of his storyline and he starts acting crazy like that, I, I let it slide. But he's like that. He's like dialed up to a hundred through the entire freaking show. 
And Vicious is not really that kind of character. He's cold and calculating. He, the few times you see him, because you don't see him very much, he doesn't have a lot to say. He, he's very direct to his point. Um, and we don't really see him and his relationship with Julia that much, if at all. So if you're going to try to do episodes with Vicious... Number one, they need to be their own standalones. They really needed to be their own standalone episodes. And they really needed to not interfere with the original, like, story stuff. Like, you know, he, he his fingers are in every episode to a degree. Um, and that kind of ruins it. It really does. Um, we don't need him inter- be interjected into every episode. We didn't need it in the original anime. There's no reason to have it now. Okay, and like I said, like one of the, and I'll give this improvement away, is they could have just told the original stories, expanded upon them a little bit every episode. You just tell a little bit more. You expand on certain ideas, and then you tell the next episode. And what they could have done is, you instead of doing all 24 episodes in one season, you would still do, what did they do, 16, I think? I don't even think they did that many. I'd have to look it up. But I want to say it was 16 episodes. And what you do is you make maybe use one of the originals from the show. You do a vicious episode if you're really good at if you really feel you have to do it. Um, And then and or you do an original episode. That would have been nice is to actually just get some original episodes and some of the goofy shit that they put in there. They could have done as a full length its own episode unrelated directly or specifically with certain characters. And I can explain every episode where that happens and you know, fix it. You can fix the series if you really wanted to, but you'd have to start from scratch. You'd have to start over again. Um, and they're not going to do that. They've invested so much money into ruining it. It's <laughs> They're not going to take it back. Um, so there's that. Um, the story, again, the story writing is just the worst. The script is awful. Okay, and I'm going to branch this into the characters' portrayals right now. The script writing for Faye Valentine is some of the worst writing I've ever seen for a female protagonist in the history of my life. Um, And the actress's performance is horrific. And I don't know who this actress is. This is the first thing I've ever seen her in. She kind of sounds like the original character, which might be how she got the role. But she is not, she does not play the actor, the, the, the character very well. And that could not, maybe that's, maybe that's not her fault. That could be the fault of the director. But from hearing personal statements from the actress herself, I think she's a terrible actress on top of being directed terribly and written terribly. And so she's actually the worst character next to Vicious in the entire show, by far. Um, she's annoying. Um, she's constantly mentioned, she's constantly saying very sexist things over and 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 over again with reference to Spike and Jet by calling them dickheads and and uh, ball whatevers. It's always she's always referencing them in many okay, not always. A lot of times, at least in every episode that she's in with them, she makes usually a genital reference of some sort with regards to the male characters that she works with. Um my understanding is in the original anime, she is never referred to as you know except maybe once when they first meet her because they don't know her that well like they might use the term broad or or or, i hate when i hate i hate working with women dogs and children that was a quote i think spike had after the, the end of an episode you know there's some of that but nothing nothing like this character is done here what they did with Faye here she acts like she's a mentally ill individual who's just kind of there and she's, I think, supposed to be the comedy relief. But she's number one, if that's the case. She's not funny. She's annoying, and she's sexist, and she's demeaning, and she's an insult to the original character. Nor is she a femme fatale, which is really what Faye Valentine is supposed to be, is this witty, clever, well-spoken, well-articulated femme fatale who has a bad luck streak and does make poor decisions, which is why women and men can both relate to this character. Well, 
every anybody could relate to Faye Valentine to a degree because of her failures, because of her n- unknown past, because of her gambling problems, because of her drinking and smoking habits. But there are elements to her that made her an admirable f- and strong female character. In the r- live action one, she is not a strong character. If you relate to this character, seek psychiatric help immediately because there's something fucking wrong with you. Okay, if you acted like this in public, be prepared to be insulted and made fun of for the rest of your life. Faye Valentine in the live action remake is the the quintessential fail character writing, acting and directing trifecta. Somebody on set should have said, "Lady, this is not being played correctly. The writing rewrite this character, do more takes, practice your lines and stop improvising." I don't know what caused the fucking Faye Valentine character to be fucked up so bad beyond beyond you she couldn't like she the director and the writer could not apologize to me enough they could not give me money of any amount because I can't really be bought so don't try you couldn't give me money to say she's a good character there is not one redeemable quality to her character in any way shape or form even the one episode where she gets the VHS tape, which was, I think, a beta in the original, which is, that's not important. Um, even the original, where she finds out a little bit about her past, they fucked that up. They fucked th- probably the most quintessential, not quite, I said that word already, but so the most, the most important, mili- the most important drama, dramatic realization for this character in that entire freaking season. They fucked that up. And you know why they fucked that up? Because they made the character such a jackass and such a dipshit and such a re- and moron and such a, 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 a poorly acted uh, character that had no redeemable qualities as far as I'm concerned. And I, the actress should be embarrassed for herself, the writers should be embarrassed for themselves, and the directors should be ashamed of themselves for thinking that, that was, those were good takes with that particular performance and that particular writing and so on and so forth. Um, she is the hor- most horrible character I've ever seen written. And I watch fucking shitty ass B movies like basket case. Okay. And there's better writing in that than there was in this fucking show that had 300,000 times more budget <laughs> the basket case spookies. And let me think of what other B-movies I can pull out of my ass at this exact moment. Uh, Ray, Razorback. You know, there's so many better, you know, even shitty B-movies wrote better characters and story arcs than this show did. And like I said, these people should be ashamed of themselves. And the people in Japan who made the original Cowboy Bebop should be fucking livid. So that's an example of the acting not being good. We've talked about how bad the writing is. Let's talk about more of the acting. Um, And part of it could be attributed, again, to the writing and the directing, so don't leave that out. Um, Spike Spiegel... um, Fearless. (laughs) Get fucked. Spike Spiegel's actor didn't seem that interested to be there. Um, And to be fair, the character is written very poorly. Spike Spiegel's played as just a big asshole in that show. And he's not. He's not. In the original show, he's like this kind of down-to-earth person. He's kind of like smooth and slick and just let things kind of fly, just let things go. You know, you know. It, there's an episode where he teaches a young man how to do martial arts, um, pretty much Jet Kundo. And he talks about how life needs is like a water. It's like the flow of the water and how you can control the current. And you just need to do that. It's not about strength. It's not about being tense. It's not about being ready to fight. It's about just doing things and using the natural flow of things to do. And that's really a good example of who Spike is. He's not a big asshole. And he plays a huge asshole in this show. He's just a dick to everybody. Except Julia. Which is weird because we shouldn't have... Him and Julia had no business seeing each other. And this could have been multiple seasons. They could have really stretched this out and made a really good show. Um, and again, Cowboy Bebop would have been the easiest thing to adapt to a live action. It really is, because there's nothing in it that requires anime-esque artist artistry to do. Whereas, like, in Trigun, it would be really hard for anyone to play the role of Vash the Stampede, because he is 
very cartoonish in his behavior. He's very over the top. You could do it. It just would never capture the same spirit as the original show. You could say the same thing about Edward. He, pro she'd probably any actor would probably have problems playing that playing her fully. But she's also not the main focus. But because Vash the Stampede is the main focus, you need somebody who can be that over the top. It could be done. The question is, is that you have to. It's lightning in a bottle if you find an actor that could do it. Um, and not make it look horrible. And sometimes some of the stuff that would be cartoonish, you just you just don't put it in there. You couldn't. You couldn't. Um, I guess Vash could be played by Ryan Reynolds, maybe. But it would be a slightly different interpretation, and that's fine as long as it's done well. You know, he'd make a better Nicholas D. Wolfwood anyway. Uh, I mean, I don't know. Throw that out there. Uh, but going back to Cowboy Bebop, um, so Spike Spiegel's character is written horribly. <coughs> Like I said, he's a big asshole. He's a big asshole to Jet all the time. And it, the only things that I remember Spike doing is the one time he's an asshole in the first episode is when he complains to Jet about the, the there's no beef in the special bell peppers and beef. He That's a kind of asshole thing to say, but Jet snarkily remarks, it is when you're broke, that's, <laughs> where's the, you know. But he was very respectful of Jet to a degree. Whenever Spike needed to go off and deal with his own personal issues, he would abandon Jet and Faye and Edward and, and Ayn and go do what he, he felt was important that needs to be done. They added an element that could have worked where they don't know anything about Spike's past. None of them do. And so them trying to figure it out, that could have been added in episodes to expand the length. But the you know and they come up with wrong answers time and time again. That was one joke that could have kept running through the whole series, and they fucked that up too. So it could have been a good joke. Your ISSP, no jet, I'm not. Your you work for the the Yakuza or on Ganymede. They could have made all kinds of funny references, and they just they they weren't smart enough to to do that. Um. So Spike was a poorly written character and and acted character to a degree. Um, and, and a little too much of the action. Kicking the... What was it? He kicks a poker chip. And I forgot what he did with it. It was some stupid cutscene in the first episode. His martial arts is a little too good. I hate to say it, but it's... You know, yes, you can expand action scenes, but you have to make those fight scenes somewhat realistic. And in the first episode, it's Faye that breaks up the, the, the fight with... At the confrontation with Asimov and Spike. And that fails because Spike gets, uh, Asimov gets the drop on Spike. And Asimov's girlfriend stops Asimov from killing Spike. And the problem with that episode is that you have a strong female character, Asimov's girlfriend, who they just want to get to Mars and start a new life. At the end of that episode in the original anime, they're driving up and the, there's a police wall ready to shoot them down and stop them from leaving Earth, from Tijuana Earth, part of the... Whatever you want to call it. Um, it's, it's, it's Earth and they're in TJ. Um, and they're flying away, trying to get off the planet. Off planet while the syndicate's chasing them. And Spike kills some of the members of the syndicate to stop. And then in the attempt to stop Asimov. And here's where the progressiveness is lost on the writers. Because they don't know what being progressive is. Which the original story already did. The girlfriend... Asimov's girlfriend takes her life into her own hands because she sees that the red eye is driving her boyfriend insane. He's losing his mind. He's killing innocent people or people who weren't really a threat or going to do anything. And he's no longer the person she fell in love with, you could argue, even at the, in the anime. And so she takes a gun while they're trying to flee. Before she get, her ship gets shot up, she shoots Asimov. And then she looks over to the window and sees Spike alongside him. And she says, adios. And then the police just freaking blow the ship away. <laughs> and you get the famous, the, the really beautiful scene where she's flying out dead. And the red eye is flying. The drugs are coming out of her fake pregnant belly. And it glitters in the sky. And it's kind of like tears are shed, so to speak. And that's an artistry that you could have, they could have captured. Um, but in the remake, they just get blown away. Uh, and the, again, that, that instance of Asimov's girlfriend taking her life into her own hands and stopping Asimov because he was no longer, he needed to, I hate to say it, he needed in a sense to be put down. 
and she knew it was the right thing to do. She that is a strong female character doing and making a very big decision to do it herself. And the fact that they cut that from the show and didn't do that to me was them not knowing how to actually write good characters and not understanding the underlying messages and tone of the original show itself. Because that's just that's a fatal flaw of how you write strong female characters. Because, yeah, she is ultimately going to lose. She's going to ultimately lose at the fault of her boyfriend. That's very true. But there is a point where she needs to be accountable for her own decisions. And, and in the original anime, she does. And she tries to correct course by showing that she knew that her boyfriend was wrong. And that he had become a monster. That needed to be, in a sense, put down. And that is a huge communication. That, to me, when I saw that episode, this was the first, this is the first, second episode I think I ever saw. Because the first episode I actually saw was Pierre LeFou. And then, for some reason, I missed several weeks of the show, and it started over from the beginning. And I saw, when I saw that episode, that was, that was huge. That was huge. And that was a, that was like, at the time, the most adult thing I had seen in a show. And graphic as well, because they do show... It's pretty graphic. The, that show in general has some pretty violent stuff in it. But not super violent, not ultra-violent. And it's definitely got a lot of gangland stuff and some shooting and, and killing and whatnot. But like I said, that just the way that was handled was better. Um, Jet Black's character is written okay. He's a little bit too... We're a team and we gotta do da 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 blah 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 whatever um i don't care uh jet black was more of the wiser of the three bounty hunters um he was definitely the more most experienced when it came to certain elements of getting background information on people and he seemed a bit wiser with how to deal with certain scenarios and they didn't really do that with jet this time around they made him more of the father figure to the rest of the the cast and that, that, that he he kind of can be that way but it's not really the it's not really what he is it's a circumstantial thing that he's trying to be the most responsible crew member of the crew and ultimately a lot of what he does in the original show is not really expressed that it's just a, like i said it's it's a it's his Seeming to be the caretaker father figure of maybe Jet and, and Faye and Edward to a degree and Ayn um, is more circumstantial and it's not something that he directly does. It, it just happens to be like a situation that comes up kind of randomly. I don't think that it's well handled. I don't think that it's well written. Uh, the actor seemed to give his best performance. Um, and again, I don't care that they made him black. You know, it's, that's that's circumstantial and irrelevant um but ultimately looking back on that entire performance he the actor clearly seems like he's trying and i if he, if his character was better written and i think he could have really made that character shine so that's he's probably the best actor in the entire series so if you didn't like jet at all then i can't believe you'd like any other character in the entire show um, but that, you know, that's the thing. Oh, the other thing I liked was the dogs. I like dogs and the dogs are adorable in, 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 in Cowboy Bebop. The multiple times that they're shown, which in the original Cowboy Bebop, there was only, a, the only big dog episode that there was, was the one that introduces Ayn and Ayn's in it for, you know, the, the, the rest of the show pretty much. Um, and then they did something stupid with him, but I'm not going to even give that away. It's not even worth it. They screwed up Ayn. Other than that, he's adorable in the show. Everything else about Ayn, they screwed up. Um, with regards to any story relevance that the the dog had. Okay, um, so we talked about the main cast not being very good. Um, where do we move on from there? The music. Yeah. Uh, they fucked the music up. And I don't think that's Yoko Kano's doing. That actually, I, there's no way it's Yoko Kano's doing. There's a few new tracks. I feel like they came to her at the last minute and said, hey, we need six, seven, eight tracks for Cowboy Bebop live action. We're going to pay you the, a crap ton of money to do it because we know you don't want to. Uh, so do it. And so she did it. And I feel that those tracks are 
were written at the last minute. They sound like they're written at the last minute. They sound like they're recorded at the last minute. Um, and they sound like they were edited in at the last minute because there's soundtracks. Even there's a, there's even a soundtrack from the original movie, um, from the Cowboy Bebop uh, anime movie, that ends up in the sh- show and it's in a weird place that doesn't fit. Whereas all of the music from the original show, it, it fit in certain places and it was cut in certain ways in order to for it to make sense. They actually, if I'm not mistaken, even the opening a little like the opening intro, like the opening title, the title intro, they recut Tank. For those of you who don't know the original music soundtrack, that song is called Tank. They cut it in a way it doesn't make sense. So I have a feeling Yoko Kano had nothing to do with how the music was was adapted and edited into the show. She was just responsible for writing the new music and them using her old music. And they sucked at it. They sucked at it a lot. Um, the editing, the music editing, if she did it, I don't know what to say. I mean, if I bump into her again, I'm going to ask her, what were you smoking? What were you, what drugs were you taking? Um, how much did they pay you to intentionally fuck it up? Because I'd really like to know. And again, I didn't read the credit rolls that much, but I mean, I can probably pull up um, on IMDb who did the audio editing. But I have a strong feeling that um, it was not her. A very strong feeling that that's not that it was not her. Um, so let me see here. Uh, But it is what it is. I mean, what are you going to do now? You know, that was already done. But as far as I'm concerned, they really... The music was awful. Um, in the way that it was cut. And that, that's my beef. That, okay, yeah, that, that's my beef with, with, with that what they did with the music. I'm also going to talk about another character and the fake, you know, progressiveness that's supposed to be in there. Because a lot of it is fake. Um, and it's poorly executed because, like I said, in the very early parts of this, um, you know, this discussion about Cowboy Bebop live action, I pointed out the original Cowboy Bebop is very, uh, is very um, progressive in a way that is something that's a big deal. I'm going to talk about the Gren episodes because the character Gren is in this show, but not, but not really, not really in this show. Um, but yeah, we have a lot of writers here. I'm looking at written one episode. Christopher Yost worked on freaking 10 of them. Exclusive story editor, Carl Taro Greenfeld. So you, you two people should be absolutely ashamed of yourselves. Um, you totally have no idea what Cowboy Bebop is tonally in any way, shape or form. You have no idea of what the show was supposed to be. And like I said, you guys should be ashamed of yourself. All these people who wrote other episodes, I see... I'm name dropping here, because you can just look this up. Javier Grillo Marjac, Alexandria E. Hartman, Jennifer Johnson, Vivian Lee, Liz Sagal, Liz Sagal and Sean Cummings. Um, you guys... Oh, Sean Cummings was also responsible for the 10, epi- 10 episodes as well. I guess there's only 10 episodes. I thought there were 16 for some reason. Maybe it just felt like there were 16. Um, yeah, this is all, they're all horrible. Um, you are all horrible people at your job. Um, and you should be ashamed of yourselves. You should publicly apologize and nobody should, uh, nobody should accept your apology because this, is oh God, because we're never going to get, we're never going to get, um, a Cowboy Bebop live action after this for like at least another 30 years. I'll probably be fucking dead. I hope not, but I'll probably be fucking dead if they ever find a way to find a way to bring this back. But getting back on point, um, like I said, they 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 really screwed up a lot of the music, how it was edited. And I don't see who did the music editing though. Oh, here we go. Series produced. Lots of producers and executive and co-executive producers. You should all be ashamed of yourselves. Series music by Yoko Kano, but who did the sound editing or the music editing series production management i'm not gonna okay i'm not gonna sit here and waste time looking this up because series sound department sound effects 
re-recording mixer, production sound mixer, ADR, Foley sound, ADR, re-recording Foley sound, boom sound, edit. Where's the editing? ADR mixer, production sound mixer, ADR. Well, it could be any of these sound um, edit, sound mixers. Probably not, though. Um, boom operator. Yeah, I don't... Okay. I don't believe that Yoko Kano put in the, the music where it was put in. I just, I don't believe it. Um, if she did, like I said, I don't know what... Ah, uh, serious music department. Here, these are the people who should be beaten to beaten with kendo sticks till they're black and blue. Um, music editor Zed Starkovich, Olivia Schlichting. Um, I think I know who that is. Garrett McElver and Thomas Golubic. I know who Thomas Golubic is. I, I know who that is. I haven't seen that person in a while. Let me see. Let me see. Is there a picture? No, there isn't. Um, but yeah, you, you guys, you people should all be ashamed of yourselves for destroying Yoko Kano's music. Um, you have a, clearly no idea of how jazz is constructed. Um, especially good jazz. Anyway, getting back on point, the music's awful. And I do want to talk about the bad progressive messages that this film does. Like I said earlier, Cowboy Bebop is, was semi-progressive. -pro Not gonna lie, it was. It had, a, actually it was the first anime that I can think of that had a trans character in it. That was Gren. And the way that they handled it in the story, I'm going to spoiler alert this, um, is that Gren is a war vet. Alongside with Vicious, they fought in the war on Titan together. And Gren, I think, gets captured and Vicious doesn't, or is, Gren is exposed as a traitor. And in jail, he's experimented on by the military that, that is there, and then he becomes a trans, pers trans person through that experience, sent to a prison planet that is populated by only men. Okay, I, and that whole episode, there's men that are dressed as women, there's um, Gren being a, a transvestite in the episode himself, which Faye uh, accidentally discovers. And Faye has to deal with being on a planet full of men, and, and, show, and she shows that she can take care of herself in that episode. Again, progressiveness. They did it in the 90s. How do you fuck it up today when everything's supposed to be hyper-progressive? It's like, how do you fuck that up? Um, and then... On top of that, Gren is treated with like a, a, a deep respect by the characters who learn about what happened to him. You know, Gren tells the story to Faye. Usually it's done through mostly flashbacks that have no words or dialogue in it, really. Um, you just know that Vicious gave him a music box. The music box had a secret message in it that exposed him, Gren, that made Gren look like he was a traitor, fucked everything up for Gren. And so Gren try, is trying to get back at Vicious by doing a red eye, a shifty red eye deal. And Gren sets the music box to explode. He gives uh, Vicious the suitcase. Vicious thinks there's red eye in it or money in it or something. And Gren had put the music box in there with a bomb to try. And the, Gren's entire purpose was an attempt to kill um, Vicious for what he had done, for how Vicious betrayed him. And that is a... And now, you could adapt Gren a little bit. You can make him more effeminate. You can make him straight up um, a transitioned character. A transition to, to a woman completely, like, in clothing. Because he, he dresses like a man, even though he no longer has those body parts or whatnot. And however, those those genitals. Or what, how, however you want to word it. Because they don't... I don't remember them showing his lower half. They, they do show his upper half, and he's got... He doesn't have moobs. He has legitimate breasts. And it's a big deal. It was a very, you know, seeing that as a kid, because I, yeah, they censor it with a cloud, but you know what they're showing. And to me, that's a huge story element that is, that is showing a, a that is really uh, uh, progressive to me. Because him being, him becoming trans Regardless of how he came to be that, it's not really looked at that closely. It's not really delved in that closely. It's more about Gren's revenge that he's tr seeking to get on Vicious because of Vicious's betrayal to him. And that's a, that tells you pretty much all you need to know about Vicious 
Vicious's character that he's ruthless, that he's willing to sacrifice his closest war friend in order to do what needs what Vicious wants to get done, whatever Vicious's try, goal is trying to be. And that was the story we needed. Instead, they make Gren a trans character who's just the the um well I guess he's just the uh in that bar he's he's just um or she's just whatever you want to call him um the 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 maitre d she's just the maitre d of that bar and I'm like that's that's a waste of the character he was a talented sax player um he was successful where he was he could defend himself he actually protects Faye, whether Faye needed that protection or not. Um, and the story of Gren is tragic. And it's well written. It's well um, structured. And to me, that is, that's progressive. You know, if you have a trans character, you don't make a big deal about it. You don't make it the centerfold of a story. Unless that's the, that is the centerfold of your story. And there's lots of films. There's lots of books. There's lots of many sources of media that having a trans person can be the center fold of that story or a person dealing with their transition. There's these stories exist. The thing is that they don't need to exist in a pre-existing material that never focused on it that much to begin with. It was a circuit. The transition was a circumstance of what happened to him, whether he wanted it or not. It is not really relevant. It's that he was betrayed by vicious and what happened to him in prison. You could rewrite that. You could rewrite a lot of those things, him being stuck on the planet full of men maybe he felt he needed to transition there's so many ways you can make that a little different and still be progressive the way it was handled in the live action show should be offensive to the trans community <laughs> because it's so piss poorly they 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 don't even do it they don't even deal with it that well in the original in the remake and it's in the remake in the live action and the fact that the jupiter jazz episodes are never fully addressed properly um, is a sign that these writers had no... They don't care about progressivism. They don't care about the story of Cowboy Bebop. And they definitely don't care about the the, the tone. Because those episodes... Those episodes, there's a reason they're in the exact middle of the series. And it's because that is a big transition, not just for Spike, Faye, Jet, and uh, Vicious, and even Gren... Who doesn't who you know doesn't survive that incident? But the idea is that there's so much that goes on in those two episodes that they made a part one and a part two because it was such a big deal. It's something that one episode could not maintain. It was as focused on as the last ep two episodes, which the last two episodes are the real folk blues parts one and two, and it's the fight finale, the big finale. So there was a reason they put a lot of attention to those episodes and. That if you if again if you're gonna make this show correctly, that should have been the end. That should have been the ending of the first season, which should have been the grand episodes. And I could do you better. I could do you one better. And ultimately, but you get my point how they mishandled all these different characters and how they mishandled the overall story. There's a great story with progressive ideas as well as traditional ideas coming together. And that's what makes Cowboy Bebop appeal to the original anime to so many people. Because it's not about ideology. It's not about ideas. It's not really pushing an agenda. It's these this scenarioistic stories, right, that are not necessarily... They're semi-canon. But every episode, you see the characters interact with something different that you see how they resp respond to it, how they deal with it, and how it affects them. Okay, Every episode, it affects them very differently and in a big way. And again, my biggest beef was like the Pierre LeFou episodes from the, the remake, the live action, and the, and the original. They screwed that, the tone. They, don't, they were tone deaf through that entire episode. The handling of the Pierre LeFou, number one, Vicious had nothing to do with any of that. Adding Vicious to the Pierre LeFou storyline ruins the Pierre LeFou storyline. Because the story, the story arc of that episode. Because in 24 minutes, in the original anime, Pierre LeFou is an intimidating, strange, bizarro, bizarro type of character. Villain, specifically. And he beats the crap out of Spike. And the thing that they fucked up really bad was there's three elements that they fucked up. The big element was the Pierre LeFou. They didn't make him intimidating enough. 
and they didn't respect the character design enough, which again, the character design is over the top, but it's over the top for a reason because it's hyper contrasting to the gritty, you know, world that Spike lives in, you know, and really that should have been an episode with really only Spike in it. Okay, they, they, there was no reason for Faye and Jet to be involved, maybe except at the very, very end, but they fucked that up. The second thing they fucked up was that Jet, I think, gives, or, or Spike, no, Spike gives away the technology that Pierre LeFou has that's deflecting bullets. And in the original anime, they don't know why he's able to do that. They have no knowledge of how he does it. Um, to my knowledge, again, from, from the English dub, they never say anything about how he does it. The fact that Spike throws a throwing knife at Pierre LeFou, which is the only thing that gets through his defenses, the only reason he did it, it was the last freaking thing he had. He was out of ammunition, he was out of guns, he was out of tricks and traps and all the things that he tried to do. He ran out of everything. It was his last chance. And it worked. It was, you know, it's a f one of those things that... that you, you, they created a villain. They gave him a weakness. The, the hero is not aware of that weakness, but he systematically goes through everything that he physically can do, from hand-to-hand -hand combat to using bullets to using explosives and all the things available to him that he goes to his weakest available option, his worst available option, which is his, his throwing knife, and that actually worked. And then just them showing that to us tells us that that was a weakness that the villain had. Okay, and you could have added that that was his weakness after the fact. Um, and he needed to die a more violent death than flying off screen. That's all that happens to him. He just flies off screen. We never actually see what happens to him. So maybe they'll bring him back, but I don't want him back. Not if he's not after that fiasco. Um, he gets crushed by a giant animatronic, which is f weird, but he screams, Mommy, Mommy, Mommy. And there's a scene that has no dialogue in it, I don't, to my knowledge, that explains his fear of cats. It explains the, how he mentally regressed. Because it shows it happening in, in a silently done visual story. Again, show, don't tell. In the live action, they tell you. The, 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 the doctor that's with Vicious before they let him out says it bitch shut the fuck up nobody wants to know that okay because there should have been that that those shots that they could have done and it could have been done in film noir it could have been done in kind of psychedelic visuals like in the original there's so many things they could have done to show what happened to pierre lefou that turned him into tengu the assassin the psychotic assassin and they failed they just ultimately fail because the writers, the directors, did not understand the source material. They did not understand the tone. That episode's treated almost like a horror slasher episode. And the whole thing is that you're supposed to take this villainous Pierre LeFou very seriously, even though he looks goofy because of what he's able to do and what he does accomplish. Even though it doesn't seem like a lot because he's blowing. But, I mean, he's doing more than most villains do with a spaceship. He's blowing up buildings. He's blowing up cars. He's, like, he opens his 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 suit up and there's all these weapons. They did do that scene, but it's handled very poorly. And they didn't earn it because you, they didn't make Pierre LeFou creepy and odd enough. And I guess they were trying to make it more realistic. But remember, that character is supposed to be expand beyond realistic he's supposed to be um exaggerated to offset the main cast and he's he's so powerful seemingly so powerful that it's what makes pierre lefou's character intimidating and they just they 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 failed at accomplishing that and that like that's the the third from last episode i think is the one with pierre lefou and they changed it to dogs so they could add Ein in there for some reason. And then Ein broadcasts something from Pierre LeFou, like a, like a message. That was all horrible. That did not need to be in there. The dogs should not have been the trigger f that sets Pierre LeFou off. That makes him, like, lose his shit and start, like, going berserk towards the animals that he... F spoiler alert, he actually has a fear of cats in the original. Because when he was being operated on and experimented on, there was a cat always watching him. 
And so he, he gives them this fear of cats. They did the same thing, but with dogs. And, or, and they did it only because they wanted to implement Ein. And you, they didn't need, need to do that. And I felt that they did it because a lot of the episodes that have Ein in it usually had Edward in it. And because Edward's not in the major point portion of the series at all, there's no way to implement Ein and Ed's adventures because they forgot to put in Ed- Edward. Again, an oversight that is an epic failure of the live-action show. And, again, looking looking at that episode, watch that one episode. And, yeah, ignore the vicious stuff because it's all garbage. But watch that one episode. And, um, and how <laughs> the Mission Impossible scene that Vicious does. But watch the whole episode with regards to Pierre LeFou's stuff. And watch the original Pierre LeFou episode. And you can understand what I mean when they got the tone wrong. And how they fucked it up. It should have been like a quasi-slasher horror film. Now here's the final essence of this. Because this has gone on for a while. I'm, we're, clearly I'm doing Ghostbusters Afterlife in another video. Um, what did they fuck up? What, how could they have done... What could they have... How could you create a Cowboy Bebop live action that is a... That is the right way to... What was the best way for them to have handled it? And I can explain that very simply. Um, the way I would have handled it was you recreate the original series. okay? But you don't need to do all of the entire show in one season. What I would do is get all the way to the episode with Yao, Yao Tenrai. And, Yao, I'm sa- I know I'm saying his last name wrong. Yao Tenrai and where Vicious kills him. And the episode where they fight at the... And it's the same episode, I believe, where they fight at the church. Okay? And so you do that episode. That's your finale of season one. What goes in between? All the episodes that pretty much were in the original show, you do with all of those in between, but you fill it in with original new episodes. You introduce new villains, new stories, story arcs, and you tell your own stories because these characters, you can do that. You can tell modern progressive stories if you really wanted to in their own episodes and you're not doing a disservice. And if you're going to make 60 minute long episodes, expand upon those ideas. Expand upon the villains, especially because not all of them get enough screen time to be interesting. They just kind of exist. Like, I will say, um, the dog napper uh, person, Hakim, um, he could have been expanded upon in the original show. We don't know a lot about him. We just know that he gets a lot of plastic surgery and nobody can recognize him. And that's how he. Um, is, you know, constantly able to stay on the run. There's a lot of episodes that they didn't do, like Zebra and Giraffe, which is a great... I don't remember the name of that episode, but it has to do with the demon child that plays uh, Harmonica. It's not really a demon. I don't want to ruin that episode, because that's a really good episode. Um, but I call her call him demon, because there's something... There's foul play afoot with the child playing Harmonica. Um, but the Zebra Giraffe episode is really good. Um, there's There's several good episodes... That they didn't do and could have been done. And they wasted time with trying to be hyper-progressive and all these other things. Um, Somebody asked me about... There is a lesbian scene between Faye and a mechanic woman. Um, That could have been rewritten and applied in a better episode. Which is, I think it's called Rock and Roll Queen. I forget the name of the episode. But there's a character who... She drives a truck... She's like a space trucker, and she's older in the anime, but you could make her younger. Her age, the age is part of her charm, because she's kind of, you know, well-versed and well-knowledgeable about what she does and all of that. She has lots of experience, but you could make an alteration where she could be younger, and that could be your your lesbian scene with her and Faye. Um... And that, you could have just saved it for that episode, and it would have just been as believable. It would have been more believable there than the way they did it in uh, Cowboy Bebop. It's a stupid scene. It doesn't make a lot of sense. It just happens. And um, it's it's not earned by the writing. The writers, in order to, to make characters have those kinds of things, you can have them do flings. I get that. But you have to create a likable character first. And then you see how that character... Once you like the character, then you see them do that activity. 
you can you should be able to understand why that character would participate, what that character would find intriguing about it. And that's the thing with Faye Valentine, is I could see that happening with the original Faye Valentine. Okay, you can have that scene. You can do that with the original Faye Valentine as long as you handle it properly. It was not handled properly. It was just shoehorned in there. There's no real... It's 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 really just kind of happens. And again, it wasn't earned. It didn't make a lot of sense. And again, these writers and directors and, and people involved did not deserve to have did not deserve to have the opportunity to do that because they clearly have at least to me shown that they are incompetent when it comes to writing the character of Faye Valentine to take such a gross liberty of assuming what's in Faye Faye's sexual preferences. Um, you have to earn that. That could have been something you'd done in season two. Okay. You had to earn it and, and they didn't earn it with that character. And again, it's an insult to those types of, of characters. Um, and I'm not types of, it's an insult to the, I dare I say the LGBTQ community because it makes a mockery of the complexity of lesbian relationships. Oh, it just happens. It's just something that can happen. You know, there's no thoughts or real feeling that goes into it. They just wanted to do it. You're hot. I'm hot. Let's just do it. And yeah, that can happen. But to do that with a main character and never establish earlier on, that that might be something that that character would be interested in um, is again, it's piss poor writing. It's just piss poor writing at any point. They could have had Faye show some sort of attraction towards females and males. Both. She could be bisexual. I don't care. You have to establish those things early on. We know jet black and spike Spiegel are, are mostly straight males because Jet has a daughter, had a family. Spike Spiegel had Julia. We know these th- was in, is in, is and was and is still in love with Julia. So we know that that that's why they're probably not looking for anything else. Regardless, Jet's not looking for another woman. He still has f- the feelings that he has, and Spike has the feelings that he has. It's never established what feelings Faye has towards anybody and they actually do establish some of that in the anime it's still very ambiguous so you can interpret it however you want but to directly do that with that character and not build up to that is insulting to the character it is insulting to the fan base it's insulting to the original writers of the original show and you're not being progressive by doing that you are being regressive because you're making and simplifying and trivializing Um, those, the relationships of, of, of people who are, let's say in this case, lesbian, you're simplifying it just to throw it in there and pat yourself on the shoulder and go, look at me, I'm progressive when you're not, you're regressive because you're oversimplifying those types of of relationships and, and you're doing it with a character who's poorly written in the show anyway, poorly performed and poorly portrayed. And then you're using that as maybe kudo points for some reason. I I just don't quite understand and I think that by doing that, it, it, again, there's little moments of this throughout the entire story, the entire show, where none of the characters earn the things that happen to them that are supposed to be references to progressivism. None of that is earned, and none of that is done. And the original stuff that was progressive in the show is either a footnote, doesn't even occur or happen, uh, the character that was the progressive character is completely thrown aside, for a story that nobody, for vicious storyline that nobody wanted, especially the way it was produced and made, and it's like you're 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 putting a you're basing this all on a checklist, and if you want, okay, and here's my thing: if you want to have LGBTQ characters and you want more than just Gren, let's say, you have to earn it. You have to prove that you can be honest to the source material and write it in a really fascinating way you have to be respectful to the source material to a key and prove that you know that you can expand upon these characters to have those kind of interactions and cowboy bebop didn't earn that with any singular character they didn't earn it with one even jet even jet black is probably the best written character in the group and that's not saying much they fucked up that hard and i will never forgive them for that as far as i as long as i live I don't want to see movies with regards to those actors. 
in it. I don't want to see movies that were made and produced and directed by the people who were involved. I will not outright go see movies that have any of those people's names attached to it going forward without it being vetted by other people. And they'd, it's a very short list of people who would I would trust to tell me that it's pretty good. After this fiasco, it, it, it is that bad. And like I said, all they had to do was recreate the original anime, put in filler episodes of their own that tell the stories they want to tell and do that. That's fine. You can do those things. But, and you could even make a few vicious episodes. Add a few episodes with vicious if you really want to tell that story. But you, they, the way that they told it, they'd have to redo the whole thing structurally. And again, you still can't have vicious be the center of attention. You have to have him there in the room. You have to have him semi involved. Um, you have to have him mostly quiet, intimidating presence um, and not act like an over the top cartoon character. Which, yes, anime is a type of cartoon, but the, 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 it is an adult cartoon in a sense that is taken very seriously. And the way that they portrayed Vicious was not taken seriously at all. It, by the actor as well as by the writing and directing staff. So that is a universal failure. And like I said, there, the, you, know, you could have the eunuch story. It could, that could have been its own story. Where there's a syndicate dude... That Spike needs to kill, or somebody needs to deal with, or even Vicious could deal with it in his own storyline, if you wanted to do it, where he deals with that individual. Um, but to, but again, to do it the way they did it, it was just wrong. It was bad. You could introduce different villains. They could have introduced all kinds of storylines that talked about modern ill, the ills of modern society, and so on and so forth. But they chose actively not to do that. And they chose to do it the laziest way possible, the most insulting way possible, the most pathetic way possible, the most um, horrific way possible, and without a care, respect, or understanding of the original source material, what the, the, the tone was. I mean, like I said, a teenager could watch, a teenager who can moderately write, and, a, and, a, and at least an editor, a video editor who could take that story that that teenager wrote and try to make it similar in tone to the original, you could have, that could have been done by, by less educated people. To me, Cowboy Bebop would have been the easiest show to make li a live adaptation of. And they fucking failed. And that is, I, I don't think that Netflix and the people that worked on that show and even on Death Note, because I've heard how bad that was adap uh, adapted. Um, they should not be doing television show adaptations ever again. They shouldn't really be doing almost anything ever again if that's the way that they're going to handle adaptations. Um, how these people got job are going to get jobs after this, I don't know. And if they are, th I, I have no hope for Hollywood. I haven't had hope for Hollywood in years. But I mean, that's why I don't like. I'm glad I don't work for Hollywood. I work for a Japanese company. Um, I work for a Japanese studio, so I don't have to worry about that. But the problem is, is that I consume a lot of Hollywood, you know, media from movies to t TV. And, and when they do it right, I like to comment on it. When they do it wrong, it's unforgivable, especially with something that is pre-established. If you're adapting a book for the first time, or you're adapting a screen, uh, a play for the first time. Or you're adapting, and even then with a play, it's kind of hard to fuck that up, to a, to adapt it to a film, per se. I mean, it's been it's been fucked up before, so I'm not saying that it doesn't happen, but it's it, it shouldn't be that hard. And something like Cowboy Bebop, which outside of the directing of it and shooting scenes differently than you would have in the anime because of the two different styles, I don't understand how you couldn't almost do a shot for shot remake but with the shots being different in a way and then expanding upon those stories, those singular stories. Because like I said, I feel like the producer said we need an hour long episode, every episode. And they're like, but the original show is only 24 minutes. So that's why they threw the vicious stuff in there and they read it, wrote as fast as they could before they even knew what they had. They copy wrote it. They packaged it. They slapped a fucking thing saying it's coming out soon and they're selling it and they're selling it. And to me, it's a cheap cash grab. It's a, a slitting of the throat of the original uh, show. 
and every person involved in the remake of Cowboy Bebop who knew that it was, who even if they who did not stand up and say what we're making is wrong, we need to go back and redo it. Those people were right. Everyone else who didn't think to do that, you should be ashamed of yourselves. The actress who played Faye, Faye Valentine, the actor who played Spike, maybe a little, the directing, the writing, the producers. Um, and the music editors should all be ashamed of themselves for what they did. What they did was not professional. It was poorly made garbage. It's less than a B movie. Um, and it is the proof that, um, that you, that these people do not care about the show. They never cared about Cowboy Bebop. It was them making a quick buck for themselves. They didn't care about the original source material they show that they are incompetent in using and recreating original source materials, regardless of what they are. They should not be trusted with any of that material in the future. I don't care what they've made before. There's no excuse for something that should have been very simple to do. If you're recreating Cowboy Bebop, you as a director should have watched that series like ten times before you started right before you started getting writers and made them watch the entire series several times before they got involved because that way you would have and same with the director everybody involved should have watched that series multiple times including the actors the main the main actors and they should have thought twice about writing vicious a story with no real direction that was coherent and in the respect that the original story deserved and like I said, if they would have done a season one that ended with the episode with Yao Yao Tenrai being killed and the church the church fight with Vicious, if that would have been the end of season one, ten episodes maybe, you add a few extra episodes sprinkled in there that are original to bring in the old viewers to see the new the new version, and you expand every episode to be maybe forty five minutes instead of an hour. You know, double the length of the original episode. It doesn't have to be an whole hour. There's, they could have made it work, and but it would have required actual talent. Would have required actual time and and care and craftsmanship. And nobody involved in that show had any of those talents. And if if you think that they did in a previous work, then explain to me how they could screw that up. And it, then again, if they if you can't explain to me how they screwed it up which is fair it comes down to the fact that they just didn't care and that makes them horrible people that just want to make money for themselves they didn't they, they're not artists a real person who cares about their art and their craft would not want this in their filmography they would not want this in in their you know in their uh in their uh in their catalog of works that they have done you know they sh again this is a shameful cash grab for the people making them making the show um netflix should be have gotten rid of everyone involved in this unfortunately even the people who were doing the best they could with what they were given i'm sorry it's just there's a point where you need to say this is not working you know and fight against it as hard as you can and let them get rid of you because that way when the show comes out and sucks you can sit there and say, yeah, the show was fucking terrible. That's why I wanted to get out of it. And I tried it, pleaded with the director and the writer. And they were having none of it. They wanted to write their own piece of shit show. And I didn't really want to be a part of it. And maybe there's other underlying things. You know, the Jet Black script might have looked legit enough. But all in all, they struck out. Netflix has struck out again on a live action adapt live action adaptation of an anime. I know that they're they're doing I guess Avatar: The Last Airbender, um, as an as a live action, and that's going to be horrible because the original creators want nothing to do with it. Last time I checked, and again I am worried who's involved, and that's a thing. That's a thing. Hollywood um, doesn't care about t entertaining you. They don't care about telling a good story. They don't care about showing great story arcs of characters at all. They have no care for any of it. And all they care about is making money and getting out like a political message. And for that, they should be ashamed of themselves. Make your own content. Make something original and, and, and spout, espouse your, your political ideologies and your social ideologies. And those. That's what it's for. But to take old source material 
that never had those things in it to begin with, except maybe a hint of the bad things about consumerism is kind of in Cowboy Bebop. But beyond that, and it's only in a couple episodes, beyond that, there is no reason at all for that show to exist in the format and way that it does. And like I said, you, you these people, in my opinion... I can't believe for a minute that they watched the original and took notes and paid attention. I think they looked at it cynically and said, how can I tell the story I want to tell through a sh- this show? And that's not what you should have done with the original source material. You can do that with your own episodes that you want to make up. Because guess what? The original fans will still be able to watch the live action versions of the original episodes without that lingering on in their sh- in their show. There's, again, ways to appeal to everybody but in the attempt of them appealing to i guess a certain group of people um that's that's a big epic failure because that's a the big middle finger to the lgbtq community that whole show is a big middle finger to that community whether you think so or not watch the original because if you don't see that then you are a fucking fraud and i say a fraudulent person because you're you do not understand what patronization is and what what pandering is. And you don't understand that that's what is in the new Cowboy Bebop. It's insulting to that community. They should be livid with it. Because it was handled better in the original show. Okay. From 1990-fucking-8. Okay. And that's really all I have to say about it. <clears throat> um, I give this show a 0 out of 10 stars. Get fucked, Netflix. I'm not canceling my subscription because that show is terrible. Um, I actually get the DVDs sent, the Blu-ray sent to my house for other... I have that service. And it comes with the streaming, so I'm going to keep the streaming. But, um... Just get fucked, Netflix. What the fuck were you thinking? And if you if you are th- competent and coherent in thinking, you should remove this Cowboy Bebop from the site. Make it, put it on DVD so if anybody wants it, they can rent it on DVD. But get it off the fucking site. It's an embarrassment to your studios. It's an embarrassment to your company. And it shows how incompetent the people you have hired are. And how much they give no fucks about your company's success. That's all I have to say. If you're a fan of Cowboy Bebop and you found some things that you might have liked in the show, that's fine. I, I tried to like Jet Black as much as I could. They, they, it was okay. There's a few things that are passable that, you know, wouldn't bug me that much. Like I said, the Harrison thing didn't bug me at all. I just thought the original stories told better. Okay? But that's what I'm saying is they're trying to recreate the wheel. And I'm sorry, the wheel's kind of a perfect setup as is. So you you either need to, instead of use a wheel, create jets to let us fly, which puts us in a whole new platform, a whole new interpretation that is so new and so original that we all would just be blown away by it. But the thing is, is that this interpretation of Cowboy Bebop, there's nothing original about it. And the things that are attempts at originality could have been done by a fifth grader, could have been written better by a fifth grader. A fan, it, it was a fan fiction gone wrong. And um, and it was written by someone who probably has no love for the original show. And if they did, I'm sorry, you were either incompetent as a writer or you're a liar. Take your pick. I accept both of them as suitable answers. I can't think of it in between. You're either a terrible adaptive writer or you're a liar. Because that adapt- the adaptation that was done is horrible. And if the writers blame the director, and even the cast and some of the other people involved blame the director, I'll get on the director's case. Nobody is taking accountability for any of this. Okay, nobody really is. If it's the actor's ideas, okay, fine, point at them. You point the finger at whoever you need to, I'll be pissed off accordingly. But you need to prove that that's what happened, or you're all guilty of being hack frauds. Some of the biggest hack frauds in all of Hollywood. And you should be ashamed of yourselves. For creating this fucking horrible show. And like I said, a lot of people who 
watch it and like it who have not watched the original, you need to do yourself the service and watch the original. I don't watch things that are animated. Then you're useless as a critic. Okay, I don't like watching um, avant-garde films, but I do. Why? Because it helps me grow as an analytical person. It helps me understand film in a different way. I learn things from watching it. I don't enjoy watching them, but I learn things from, from watching them. And I can then see them in films where they kind of go that route, but they don't always do it. And I can see how that is a benefit to the film that I'm watching. Because if I'm going to be a critic of something, I need to learn. Okay, I need to watch the smorgasbord of of styles and ideas, and 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 figure out what works. I might not like animation, but I should be able to appreciate well written stories when I see them. Okay, and that's the thing that bugs me about certain critics who don't watch certain types of movies. How can you feasibly be a critic? And if you are a critic that doesn't watch certain types of movies, you better have another critic sitting next to you who does. And this is like the things that you see with like red letter media, for example. Jay is kind of the artsy. Jay and I want to say the guy with the beard. The, I can't think of his name. Josh, I think is his name. They're the him and Josh are kind of the artsy. They watch the avant garde stuff, the Dario Argento Italian films, and those kind of things. And and Mike and and Rich don't. They're more of the traditional film critic who watches more mainstream stuff. They'll watch a few avant-garde things when told that, yeah, these are really good, you should watch these. And it's fun to watch them back and forth because you do get those interpretations. That's called a good critic team, right? Um, Siskel and Ebert were that because Siskel had was more into some of the more dramatic things, the more drawn-out things, better writing. And I think... Um, Ebert was more like a big kid and he interpreted things, I think more towards how the masses look at things with a few exceptional nuances. And when he used those nuances that he was good at, that he was more versed in than Siskel, it made him look like a brilliant uh, critic, which he was. And Siskel was a brilliant critic too. So with a few, again, a few exceptions because sometimes they, they saw those guys saw so many freaking movies that everybody's allowed to make a mistake. <clears throat> I think uh, Ebert likes Baby's Day Out, and it is a horrible fucking movie. Siskel has a, a couple of movies, too, that are horrible, but he likes them for what they are and whatnot. But the one thing that I will universally say is that there are people who like Cowboy Bebop, but they cannot justify why. Oh, the story is well-written. Structurally explain to me how the story is well-written, and I will dismantle your construction within seconds and prove that you are a hack fraud that doesn't know anything about how stories are constructed. I mean, that's how bad the story writing in Cowboy Bebop, the live action series is. Tell me about character development and character story arcs. Trust me, I can dismantle that too, because that's how bad it was poorly. It was written in the Cowboy Bebop live action version. Okay. Don't go on about audio editing. Uh, uh, music, for example, musical editing. The music editing in the live action series is offensive to the source material and to the work of a great female jazz composer such as Yoko Kano. Makes her look incompetent because people might think she's the one that put that music in those fucking scenes. She didn't. Those music editors did. Who pretty much, as far as I'm concerned, know nothing about jazz and jazz structure and anything about where you should be putting these things. Okay? Just bottom line. And if there's some underlying reason why that audio music editing was as bad as it was, please tell us. I would like to know. But anyway, I've spoken enough on this subject. Um, I could I could go on. I could go on for hours about every fucking episode and how fucking horrible every episode is. And... I barely have scratched the surface of really what makes this series bad. I've done a lot of generalizing. I may not have explained in enough detail some of the problems, but I've at least told you where you can start looking yourself if you want to be analytical to the show. But it's not worth your time. It's a horrible show. The thing that is, that I found entertaining about it is how bad it was compared to the original, but it was not entertaining to do. It was painful to watch. It was painful to experience. 
because of how bad it is to the original source material. And again, as a person who writes stories, who enjoys storylines, who writes music professionally for shows and for television, from even a music editing standpoint, it's awful. The original soundtracks from the original show are great. They're cut and used properly in the original anime. And there's the best way to listen to the music of Yoko Kano. And if you like her music, buy her albums because her work is incredible. Do not use what you hear in the live action as a reference to her writing because it's chopped up in such a piss poor way and used in such a piss poor way that it is a spit, literal spit take, a spitting upon her work, her magnificent work. And it's a spit. It's an it's a it's an insult to the people who originally this whole show, the live action show is a, is is an insult to the fans that love the show. It's an insult to the people who created the show from nothing, and the people who made this should be embarrassed and in shame and ashamed that they are affiliated with the creation of this live action remake. And in my opinion, I would hope that they not get hired. For things in the near future, until they've somehow found a way to redeem themselves, somehow I I don't know, but definitely no longer allowing them to remake um, pre-existing source material. They may need to go into indie films and practice a little bit more on their art. I am your host, the RPG guy, and like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And uh, sorry. I'm sorry we had to have this discussion. I hate having these discussions. I really do. They're very upsetting. And I know they're upsetting to you guys. They're upsetting to me. Um, to have to talk about this. Because I need... I need to get it off my chest. I want the people who made this to hear my my take, my story. Because... I, I feel that they're not listening to us. They think we're these kind of trolls... And I'm sorry, I my pinky has more knowledge of Cowboy Bebop in it than those fuckers that made the live-action series have in their entire brain. And their lack of respect to me as a consumer and a viewer and a fan of the series, as well as the lack of respect to the people who made the original show. They sh Again, that's why I'm, I'm so adamant that they need to hear that what they made is bad. Again, if you think their show is good... Watch the original show and come back here and argue that it, the, the new show is better and be prepared to be dismantled. And maybe, you you know, people say to each their own, but there does come to a point where people can like, there are people who like eating trash. There are people who like consuming toxic waste. There's a, there's a person out there that eats, I think, mattress stuffing. There's a lady out there that eats spiders, live spiders. Okay? There's a person out there that eats toilet paper. And likes these people like doing those things. I don't think for a minute though that those people would recommend that we do those things too. Or that the whole world should like doing those things. They might, they might, but most of us would dismiss them as being as that advice being bad. And silly and stupid. And that's what I'm trying to say here. Is that you can, there are people who like B-movies and bad movies. But bad movies that are that people like have to be entertaining. Cowboy Bebop, excluding a few action scenes, is not entertaining. And those action scenes, the parts that are entertaining, last only about 30 seconds. And there's maybe, I can count them all on one hand in an entire series. And some of them happen multiple times in the same episode. So there's episodes that don't have anything good in it. So, yeah. I, I just, I really wish the best for the people that worked on the series, but you need a wake-up call. You need some kind of disciplinary action hap to happen. Whether it's you don't get hired for a couple of years, you have to go back to making indie mo independent movies and films, whether you, as a director, then gets shot down to, you know, second, what is it, second second unit directing, something needs to happen because not just saying how bad it is is not enough. 
There's a reason I, I want to say we haven't seen Paul... F what is it? Paul F F Feige? Make another big comedy in a while that was heavily promoted <clears throat> after Ghostbusters 2016. There's a reason we haven't seen that. Okay, there's a reason. There's a reason. Because he fucked up. He fucked up big. These people fucked up big too. And I, I'm i willing to have a discussion with any of these people in a civil way about what the fuck they were thinking because I really would like to know. And I do think that since they threw all that money, film and time down the fucking drain, we as the fans and the subscribers to Netflix deserve a documentary on the failure of the Cowboy Bebop live action remake. And what fucking bullshit drugs were going on behind screen. Because it wasn't weed. Weed would have made it... If you were on weed, you would have made a far better story. Because you would have been high as shit. And, those, and there's some episodes that you could have done that would have been fucking great. If you were high. Again, none of that was there. Show's a failure. Don't waste your time with it. Um, that's all I have to say. So, thanks for stopping by, guys. Again, like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Uh, you can check out my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash Studios for gaming action that's done live as well as my live streams here on YouTube. Um, if you do sign up for my, if you do follow my Twitch account, um, you might get access and privy to some streams that I cannot do on YouTube because some games show things like nudity and ultra violence that I can't, you can't show on YouTube. So sometimes the Twitch stream gets some extra streamage. So you don't want to miss out on that. Um, as well. So that's twitch.tv slash Jack Tart Studios. So thanks for stopping by, guys. And hopefully the next time I do one of these Let's let RPG Guy Talks, which I will probably do about Ghostbusters Afterlife, I, uh, it will hopefully be in better spirits because I would rather watch Ghostbusters 2016 again than watch Cowboy Bebop live action remake. That's how fucking bad it is. That's how fucking bad it is. Thanks for stopping by, guys. We'll see you guys next time.